right, would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity um, to talk about uh, Jesus' death and burial and resurrection today. Um, thank you for the, the peace that you give us through our relationship with Jesus Christ, that we get to be in fellowship with you, Lord God. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Have you ever felt like you've been treated unfair? Yeah. Do you have, like, not that I'm going to ask you for your story right now, but do you have a story of being treated unfair? I do. I do. I'm sure many of you do, too. But I'm going to tell you a story about someone who was treated unfair. So if you would take your Bibles and turn, do you see the little, the little mark on your Bible? It's Matthew 27. Turn to that in your Bibles. But as you're doing that, I want you to remember something. I told you this two weeks ago. Um, this is God's very word written down for us. And he tells us about himself through the lives of real people doing real things at real points in history. So I want you to remember that as you turn to Matthew 27. And I also want you to understand that these are the actual events of Jesus' death and the unfair treatment, but his absolute willingness to follow God's direction and to fill, fulfill the goal for his friends, for us. Okay, so, and also I want you to understand some of what you're going to hear, it's difficult. It might make you feel sad or, or maybe even a little mad at, at some of the people. But I just, I want you to keep listening and I want you to take um, real special care to, to pay attention to what you're listening to. I'm going to start in Matthew 11. Your, your little... Um, Marker should be pointing right at verse 11. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, You have said so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, Jesus gave no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he gave him no answer, not even a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. He was confused. Jesus was arrested. He was put on trial. Priests and teachers made up lies about him. Do you think that Jesus would say, those are lies? No. Jesus would not answer back. He was saying, yes, I will let them tell lies about me. Matthew 15 and 16. So go down just a little ways. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And they, had, and they had them a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. Okay, you need to understand, Barabbas was a terrible, horrible, murderous man. Yeah. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. So there was a large crowd. And these priests and elders went through the crowd whispering, call for Barabbas, call for Barabbas. And they spread the word. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they yelled out, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called the Christ? Understand, Pilate, this governor, was no good man. But he could see this Barabbas, this murdering evil man, was very different than this Jesus, who didn't say a word when they lied. 
Pilate said to them, What then shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. And he said, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. The people decided that Jesus was a criminal. And the crowd decided that he should be punished to death. Crucify, crucify, they shouted. Who is Jesus? Jesus is God, right? Yeah. He never sinned. He never did anything wrong. Jesus did not deserve to die. Is Jesus more powerful than the crowd? Absolutely. He is all powerful. He is God. He could say, no, I won't let you kill me. But instead, Jesus said, yes, I will let them kill me. Verse 26. Then he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Jesus was whipped. He could have stopped them, but Jesus said, Yes, I will let them whip me. Verse 27. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters and they gathered the whole battalion before him. So my understanding is that that could have been as many as 600 men standing there looking at Jesus. Do you think they were quiet? They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his hand, and kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! Hail, King of the Jews! The soldiers took off all of Jesus' clothes, and they dressed him up like a pretend king with a robe and a crown of thorns. They made fun of him. They did not understand that Jesus is the greatest king of all. They shouldn't have made fun of him. But Jesus said, yes, I will let them make fun of me. Verse 30. And they spit on him and took the reed and struck him in the head. The soldiers spit in Jesus' face. And they hit him over and over in the head. But that hurt. Yeah. Yes, because we know Jesus is fully God and Holy man, it hurt. It hurt him a lot. So couldn't Jesus say, no, you can't do that. It's not fair. I am God. Jesus is God. He could have said, no, you can't do that. But instead... He said, yes, I will let you spit on me. And yes, I will let you hit me. Verse 31. And 
when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put on his own clothes and led him away to crucify him. The soldiers placed Jesus on a cross. Hammered and nails through his hands and his feet. The very hands that healed people, that fed crowds, that stopped storms. Do you remember that? Two weeks ago we learned that. Yes. Yeah. And he loved sinners. It bled and it hurt a lot. Jesus said, yes, I will let you hurt me. Those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you really are the Son of God, come down from the cross. They shouted that over and over again. The crowd mocked Jesus, saying, Save yourself. Come down from that cross if you are the Son of God. How will Jesus answer? Jesus is God. Is he able to come down from that cross? No. He is able. He could call down angels from heaven and wipe out all 600 of those soldiers like that. But Jesus said, no, I will not save myself. Jesus chose to stay on that cross and die slowly, painfully. Jesus always, always obeyed God, even to the point of dying on the cross. Just before he died, he said, yes, it is finished. When Jesus died on the cross, being obedient to his father, he paid the penalty for sin. Do you understand that the cost of sin is death? Death on a cross. Jesus paid the price for his friends. There's only two responses to Jesus' death on the cross. Disbelief or belief. Belief and love for Jesus. So I ask, do you believe or do you disbelieve? Do you believe that he is God? And that he, and only he, can take away your sin. Our memory verse is, But God shows his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea. His name was Joseph who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate, and he asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had cut in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb, and he went away. Do you think he was sad? He was so, so sad. <clears throat> days later, after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. 
understand these women had cried for days. Their eyes were red and puffy from crying so much. And behold, there was a great earthquake. Think that scared them? Yeah, yes. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat right on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards, this is so fantastic, the guards that were outside the tomb fell down like dead men. Now it says like, so I assure you, they were not dead. They were beyond astounded and they literally passed out right on the ground at the sight of this angel. But the angel said to the women, don't be afraid, for I know that you look, you seek Jesus who was crucified. Oh, I love this. He is not here, for he has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Jesus was really dead. Jesus was really buried. And Jesus is really alive. Jesus did not stay in that grave. He conquered sin and death. Understand, he took death and he crushed death. Jesus finished the job he came to do. Jesus bought eternal life for his friends so that they could enjoy God forever. Eternal life with God is the greatest gift Jesus could ever give us. So I'm going to ask you, belief or disbelief? Because if you choose belief and you believe, then your sins have been paid. They are gone. They are wiped free. But listen to me. If you choose disbelief, you pay the penalty of sin on your own. Please choose belief. It is done. He's already told us it is finished. Mm. Would you pray with me? Yeah, I see you cheering. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, you are amazing. You did not stay dead. You conquered death. You conquered sin in my life and the lives of others. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray that any of these young boys or young girls don't know you. I pray that you would do a marvelous work in their hearts. Turn their faces to you. Give them a desire for your word that they would know it is absolute truth. Be glorified this day, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.